If it's true that heaven's open, let my heart be open to. I wanna feel the wind blowing. Be more sensitive to you. Oh, I don't wanna miss the story. I wanna hold the mystery. Oh, 'cause I'm convinced you're moving. I wanna follow where you lead. Yeah. So let it be. Good evening. Thank you for joining me tonight. I'm Erin Betley, Director of Contemporary Worship and College Ministries at Jamestown United Methodist Church in Jamestown, North Carolina. Tonight is the last of our summertime vespers centered around the fruit of the Spirit. I hope that our time together has provided an opportunity for you to pause and give thanks for the day that has just passed and also to make an evening sacrifice of praise to God. I'd like to offer a huge thank you to Cap Foster, our contemporary worship music leader, who has led us in song each and every week. As we gather together one last time this summer, I hope that you will feel relaxed and thankful and ready to start your nighttime rest. Tonight, our focus is self-control. Let's begin. Join me in the prayer found on your screen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us. Come, Holy Breath, live in us. Come, Holy Wind, move through us and cause the fruit of your Spirit to ripen in our lives. Our responsive scripture for tonight is found again in Psalm 37, verses 7 through 11. Join me in the responses on your screen one more time. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off. But those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Yet a little while, and the wicked will be no more. Though you look diligently for their place, they will not be there. But the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant prosperity. Written by... Kelly Willard, Make Me a Servant is written as a prayer. The lyrics ask God to make us a servant who is humble and meek, lifting up those who are weak. Join Kat in this simple song of prayer as she leads us in Make Me a Servant, number 2176 in the faith we sing.
As we close out our study of the fruit of the Spirit, our scripture is from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 13. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I will always remind you of these things even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body. Tonight, we once again have a special guest. I am joined by my dad, Bill Betley, who will offer us some words of reflection on self-control. Good evening, Jamestown. I bring greetings from a sister church in the Virginia Conference, Calvary United Methodist Church in Stewart Strath, Virginia, my home church where I am the lay leader. And I am delighted to be with you for our Vesper service this evening. I saw a picture a while ago. It was a picture of a dog sitting calmly. The interesting thing about the picture was that there was a dog treat on the nose of the dog, but the dog didn't move. It just sat there, looking at its master, waiting for the command that it was all right to eat the snack. Clearly, the dog was showing self-control. Yes, it was just a trick that the dog was trained to perform, but maybe that's the lesson. Maintain self-control, wait to be obedient, and listen for the command from the master, because there's a treat in it for us in the end. Self-control may be one of the most important fruits to possess, even if it is listed last. Self-control helps us to resist temptation. It guides our decision and it correlates with how we show the other fruits in our lives. For an example, the gift of forbearance or patience requires self-control. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 29 says, Whoever is patient has great understanding, but one who is quick-tempered displays folly. Our sinful nature leads us to give in to our temper, but we are called to rise above that and show patience. Self-control can be applied to all of the fruits of the Spirit in the same way that it is applied to patience or forbearance. Displaying self-control is often a matter of responding rather than reacting. And most of the time, we just react to stuff. A long time ago, I was a radio broadcast engineer, and when I first started, I needed to learn how to not react when facing a problem. When something in the transmitter failed and the station was off the air, my first reaction back then was, oh my goodness, I've got to get this thing fixed, we're off the air. But my mentor taught me that I would never be able to troubleshoot effectively if I was emotionally reacting instead of systematically responding to the problem. When we react to a situation, we let our emotions take control. And in relationships, we're more likely to become defensive and then say hurtful things. Responding, however, involves developing a thoughtful response that is guided by reason more than emotions. Fortunately, as Christians, our responses to situations are to be guided by the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ gives us the perfect example of self-control because He lived a sinless life and possessed every fruit of the Spirit. Jesus demonstrated self-control because He was sent to earth to carry out the God's will. In Matthew 26, verses 53 and 54, Jesus says, 
Do you think I can't call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen this way? I think many of us would have just called down the angels. But Jesus knew what he was sent to earth to do. And despite his own fears revealed by his prayer in the garden, he demonstrated self-control in submitting to God's perfect plan. Jesus was to live a perfect life in order to set an example for us. And in the end, he died for our sins so that we may have eternal life. Without the self-control of Jesus, we would face death as the punishment of our sin. We are all filled with God. We are created in God's image. And we are to help bring about God's desire for a heaven on earth. We are here to love others and care for others. And sometimes that task is hard. We are bombarded with consumer messages that urge us to indulge in ourselves. We are pushed to conform to the ways and the things of this world. We need the fruit of self-control so we can go about the work of God. God knows that. So God gave us the tool. 2 Timothy 1st chapter verse 7 says, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. So with the Holy Spirit inside us, we are able to possess self-control and demonstrate the fruits of the Spirit. As a result, we can live in a way that is not only honorable to God, but helps contribute to God's plan of heaven right now on earth. So as an engineer, I learned to take a deep breath, pause, and think about the problem I was facing, and then respond to what the equipment was doing and not doing. I learned to transfer those skills and adjust to them when relating to people. Not that people need to be fixed, but by listening and caring for my brother or sister, I can show self-control and make sure my response always begins with love. So the next time you're in a tough situation, remember Jesus and the perfect example He gave us of how to live. And while it may seem challenging to demonstrate self-control, the treat in the end is pretty great. Living in the fruit of the Spirit means you are aware of the influence of the Holy Spirit. As a child of God, you'll want to shape your life around the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Someone who walks in the Spirit patterns his or her life after Jesus Christ. It is the way of faith. And if we live by the fruit of the Spirit, we constantly keep our sights on God. Paul says this, if we live in the Spirit, we have to keep step with the Spirit. We have to learn how to abandon our bad habits and learn new ones. And it is through this Spirit Jesus makes us into people who love God and others. We are to be diligent in prayer, the study of Scripture, attending worship services, and fellowshipping with other Christians. We should nurture our relationship with God, making it the priority of our lives. And we must work every single day to live by the fruit of the Spirit that God has called us to bear. Growing in the fruit of the Spirit is expected in a child of God. As we grow, we develop our witness to others, what the faith and life of a Christian looks like. So I challenge you to make every effort on a daily basis to serve Jesus and others. Live by the fruit of the Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in your daily walk. Walk with Jesus not the world. Join me now for our good night prayer. Throughout this entire summertime Vesper series, we have said the same prayer each week, and I hope by now that maybe it has become incredibly familiar to you, and maybe you have even memorized it. So let us pray this prayer together one last time. God, we ask that the fruit of your Spirit may grow in us. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. 
As we would grow with you, may we bring forth fruit that is pleasing to you. As we take our rest tonight, forgive us for the ways we have fallen short and strengthen us to do better when we wake. Amen. This is our last night of Summertime Vespers, and thank you so much for joining me and joining us this summer. We will be back this winter to journey through Advent to the birth of Christ together. To stay up to date and never miss a video that Jamestown UMC posts, be sure to click the subscribe button on our Jamestown UMC YouTube page or the follow button on our Jamestown UMC Facebook page. Again, thank you so much for joining me these past few weeks. We'll see you this winter. Good night. Singing again, let it be thin, let it be thin.